Good evening, Stevens Point. I'm Brenton Canise. And I'm Florence Anderson. This week in SPTV News, UWSB is hosting Veterans Day Ceremony for Student Veterans. Central Wisconsin Youth Symphony Orchestra has an upcoming concert, and Pennsylvania has their first female mayor. All of this and more when we return. <laughs> On Thursday, October 31st, the Student Government Association of UW-Stevens Point approved a letter supporting the Reaching Higher for Higher Education bill package. SGA is paying particular attention to the bill's efforts to fully fund the tuition freeze. The complete, freeze, the complete funding of the tuition freeze included in this package would provide UWSB students with a steady idea of how much money they owe to the university. In the letter, the SGA stated that neglecting to fully fund the freeze would be a disservice to future students that will make up the, the, student, the state workforce, resulting in a weaker future for Wisconsin. The Reaching Higher, for Higher Education Bill was proposed by Re Representative Katrina Shanklin and Senator Dave Hansen last July. For, for further information on the letter or to receive updates on the Shanklin Hansen Bill package and the tuition freeze, contact the Student Government Association by email or attend one of their weekly meetings. This coming Monday, November 11th, UWSP will be honoring our men and women who are serving in the military for Veterans Day. A ceremony will be held in the DUC Alumni Room and we'll have a few speakers for the special event. UWSP Chancellor Bernie Patterson, a veteran of the U.S. Army, and Chief Warrant Officer John Wheeler, retired from the U.S. Army and the High Grounds Veteran Memorial, will be two of the speakers at this year's ceremony. Family members and friends are welcome to submit the name of a fallen student veteran who attended UW-Stevens Point. The university hopes to create a more memorial on campus in the future for all UWSB veterans. UW-Stevens Point is home to 325 student veterans. The Veterans Day ceremony will be happening at noon and is open to the public. On Monday, November 4th, the Society of Ethnobiology held their first annual all-natural tie-dye event. Students were invited to bring some clothing to the Ethnobio lab in the Chemistry Biology building in order to tie-dye them, using brown dye made with black walnuts or purple dye made from pokeberry. The Society of Ethnobiology is a group on campus that focuses on human interaction with nature, emphasizing cultural and ecological relationships. The meetings are workshop and activity-based, allowing students to work with nature and create things such as chocolate, balm, and colorful clothing. The Society of Ethnobiology meets every Monday at 5 p.m. in room 76 of the Chemistry Biology Building, or if weather permits, the Ethnobiology Garden. More information can be found on the Ethnobiology Club spin page. Curious to see what Mercury looks like up close and personal? The Science Building is giving students the chance to use telcopes, tel telescopes to witness Mercury slowly move across the solar disk. Jake Zahn takes a closer look. On Monday, November 11th, UWSP students will be able to experience the exploration of space through the transit of the planet Mercury. So next Monday, November the 11th, we'll have the chance to witness a spectacular event, an astronomical event, the transit of planet Mercury. This means that uh, if we use a telescope properly equipped with uh, a solar filter and we point to the sun, between roughly 7 a.m. and noon time, we'll get to see, along with the bright solar disk, we'll get to see a dark dot, which is planet Mercury. It will appear as if it's drifting in front of the sun. If they observe this transit, along with a friend that is, let's say, in a um, very different part of the United States or the world, they can actually combine the observations for the transit of Mercury and uh, they can repeat a very classical experiment, let's say, that was done in the 1760s with the goal in mind that we can measure the true scale of the solar system. Sebastian also mentions how students should take precaution for this rare event. Don't stare at the sun. 
um, it is not a good idea because the sun will harm your eyes. It happens very fast. Usually there is no pain. You are not even aware that you destroy your retina. And it's one of those things that are hard to fix, if not impossible to fix. So it's not worth the trouble. With the proper protection, students will be able to see the planet for free on the roof of the science building. I'm Jake Sam reporting, and this is SPTV News. The event will be held depending on weather. For more information, visit the UWSP events calendar. The third lecture offered within the College of Letters and Sciences Community Lecture Series is taking place November 12th at 6.30 p.m. at the Portage County Library. The lecture on the role of media in a healthy democracy will be UWSB Professor Sammy Park's main focus within the discussion. Park will also touch on the critical role that media play within our society and the, effect, the effects that media can have. The lecture series features many faculty and staff in the College of Letters and Science. Each speaker represents a variety of relevant topics that are part of their own research that can help the public by sharing their knowledge. The series also allows community members to interact with professionals and experienced lectures outside of a classroom setting. All lectures within the series are free and open to the public. Dates and times of future lectures can be found on the UWSB website. On Wednesday, the Academic and Career Advising Center held an information session. The session was held so the Boys and Girls Club of Portage County could get a first-hand experience take talking to employers. We go to Austin Lee Pack, who has more on the story. On Wednesday, the Academic and Career Advising Center held an information session on the Boys and Girls Club of Portage County, where students could ask as many questions as they wanted about the organization and who they are hiring. Career specialist Sue Kissinger believes that heading to events like these is a valuable experience for students. Anytime you can interact with an employer, at a, a speaker at a conference, or coming to your student organization, an, an interaction like this where you can go up afterwards and have some conversation or raise your hand and ask a question, or at a career fair, anytime you can network with an employer or somebody in a professional setting, your faculty members even, even anything like that, is going to make you a better trained professional to get in front of somebody in an interview setting. And it isn't just getting ahead in interviews. Sue sees this as a valuable way to practice networking as well. So this networking, it doesn't have to be specifically, you know, going up and shaking someone's hand at a career fair. It can be. Those are important situations too. But you need to start somewhere, and the more you can interact with professionals in your potential career field, the better. Either way, it is important to take that first step outside your comfort zone to learn from as many professionals as you can. For SPTV, this has been Austin Lee Pack. Thanks, Austin. To find more, find out more about the Boys and Girls Club of Portage County, or to learn more about upcoming events, visit their website. The Smash Boys soccer team is partnering with the Wisconsin Rapids boys soccer team to bring awareness to the mental health. The two teams are launching their annual Kicking the Stigma Mental Health Awareness Campaign, recognizing that mental health treatments and facilities are underfunded. The Kicking the Stigma focuses on how mental health is overlooked condition that also carries a stereotypical stigma like no other health care does. The funds raised from the campaign will be donated to National Alliance on Mental Illness of Portage and Wood Counties. Over the past three years, the two teams have been putting on the campaign. They have raised $17,176 to support local NAMI organizations in the surrounding communities. The two teams hope that their donations will help bring attention to mental health and the impact it can have on families, teams, and communities. Further questions on the campaign can be directed to the head coach of the Smash soccer team, Derek Bell. That's all the news stories we have for you tonight. Coming up next, we have Michael with SBTV Sports. We'll be right back after the break. welcoming place even if you don't know what support you need um, just coming down we can look at individual schedules and talk about all the different options that are available I believe that the TLC can definitely help students even for the slightest little bit the writing lab especially because you're gonna have to write papers for any of the classes they're able to proofread those and give you feedback on those. Uh, 
the writing lab has been around since 1973 and it's the second oldest writing lab in the United States, which is kind of cool. surprised by everything that I learned about TLC because I didn't realize there were so many resources for students. We'd love to see more students down here. I mean, it's great that we have 35% of the student population utilizing us, but that means that we have 65% that didn't utilize us, and I know we have support services that could benefit just about everybody. to me that I'm able to add another link between the TLC and the students. I know that as a big organization it's kind of hard to get word out to the students, especially because they're not going out and meeting with the students or being part of their classes or anything like that. So having that extra link probably helps them out a lot. And when you come down there's free coffee, tea, and hot cocoa, so they can make themselves at home and, and learn a little bit about how they can be supported. Welcome back! This past weekend, the UWSP football team hosted UWO Claire for the annual Spud Bowl game at Gorky Field. The Pointers played a solid game from start to finish as they beat down the Blue Golds 40-12. After a sluggish start on their first series, the Pointers would go up 16-6 after the first half. The team offensively dominated the field in the third quarter, making it impossible for the Blue Golds to score until late in the fourth quarter. Senior quarterback Matt Hermanski threw four touchdown passes on the day, two each to fellow senior John Tay Webb and freshman Jeffrey Williams. Ermanski completed 14 to 25 passes for 247 yards. The team improves to 3 and 5 overall and 2 and 3 in conference play. The Pointers travel to UW Platteville on Saturday for the final road game of the season. Kickoff against the Pioneers is set for 2 p.m. The UWSB volleyball team hosted UW Lacrosse in the first round of the 2019 WIAC Volleyball Championship, Championship Tournament on Tuesday night at the Berg Gym. The third-seeded Pointers handled their business as they would sweep the six-seeded Eagles to advance to the semifinal round of the tournament. Junior Ellie Adams led the way for the team with 35 assists and 12 digs on the night. April Gale and Tara Emmy each had 14 and 13 kills respectively in the winning effort. The Pointers will head to the second-seeded UW-Eau Claire Blue Golds to play in the semifinal round tonight at 7 p.m. The UWSP women's wrestling season is underway with the team having faced their first opponents on the road last week. SBTV's Rachel Ellis took a look at what the Pointers have accomplished after their first competition. Women's wrestling is officially underway. The program was announced last fall and according to the university's press release, UWSP is the first public institution in the Midwest to offer the sport. The program will enter and compete in the Women's Collegiate Wrestling Association. This opens many doors for women wrestlers at Stevens Point as they now have a space to compete against other females and showcase their abilities. Um, a lot of our women haven't had opportunities to wrestle against females like they've wrestled in high school and Wisconsin isn't a, a sanctioned state sport yet so they wrestled guys through high school and many of them were were kind of shunned by the coaches because coaches didn't know how to deal with women they didn't know how to like they thought they didn't know how to coach women so now giving them the opportunity to wrestle other women and be coached and give them the attention they deserve and really watching them prosper and take off, not just as a wrestler, but as a person as well. The team had their first experience with competition when they took on Adrian College at the Bulldog Open. Senior Brooke Thurber won in her weight class, and freshman Abby Nelson was right behind her, taking second place in the same weight class. Overall, the women placed sixth out of seven teams and were able to gain valuable experience that they will use going forward. I guess it was just like a nice first experience because it was a little bit of an easier tournament just to get the girls itching for more competitions and I like the team aspect where we were all getting together having fun and it was more about the fun aspect but also winning too. As the pointers returned to the mat in preparation for their first home duel, they faced pressure to be as successful as other experienced programs. I think it's just beating, beating the stereotype that new programs are weaker than previously established programs and not letting that discourage them and knowing that we can always continue to build and grow no matter where we're at. 
The team has high hopes for the rest of the season and is ready to face more competition. This has been Rachel Ellis reporting for SBTV Sports. The Pointers will make history with their first home duel set for Wednesday, November 13th. The team will face off against Lakeland College starting at 6 p.m. The defending national champion UWSP men's hockey team opened up their season versus St. Norbert College on Friday night at the KB Willard Arena. After a scoreless first period, the Pointers <coughs> would get on the board first with a second period goal by senior Austin Kelly. Later in the period, while trying to survive a penalty kill, Luke McElhaney would increase the lead to two with a shorthanded goal off an outside pass from Ryan McKellar. St. Norbert would not let the deficit last as they would tie things up with two goals of their own, but the game would not be settled in regulation. The momentum stuck with the Green Knights in the overtime period as St. Norbert scored the overtime winner to win 3-2 and end the Pointers' win streak at 31 games. The Pointers would get a revenge against the Green Knights the next night in De Pere, winning 3-1. The Pointers are now 1-1 one and, one and remain in the number one spot in D3 hockey rankings. The team will play two games this weekend as the Hills Gustavus Adolphus on Friday night and the University of St. Thomas on Saturday night. Now looking at professional sports, the Green Bay Packers lost to the Los Angeles Chargers 26-11 on Sunday out in Carson, California. While the game seemed close on paper in the first half as the Chargers only kicked three field goals to lead 9-0 at halftime, the Packers were never really into this game. The team punted the ball in their first five possessions and it would take almost the entire third quarter before the Packers finally put points on the board. The Chargers offense had a big day against a struggling Packers defense with 442 total yards while the Packers only had 184 yards on the day. The loss snaps the Packers four game win streak as they fall to seven and two but remain one game ahead of the Vikings for the lead in the NFC North. They will host the Carolina Panthers at home on Sunday afternoon. The Milwaukee Bucks defeated the Los Angeles Clippers 129 to 124 last night in Los Angeles. The Bucks win was highlighted by a 42 point second quarter as the Bucks led by 11 at the half. Despite Kawhi Leonard being inactive, the Clippers would make it a close game at the end but fell short in the effort. Reigning MVP Giannis Antetokounmpo had 38 points and 16 rebounds but fell one assist short for the triple double. The Bucks fourth straight win improves them to six and two overall. The next game will be on the road against the Utah Jazz on Friday night. That's it for sports all here on the today's show. Up next is Theo Mai with entertainment. Thanks for kicking it with me. I'm Michael with SBTV Sports. UW Stevens Point is home. It's a university where professors know your name and get you involved in research. They inspire us to realize big dreams. At UW Stevens Point, sustainability is what we stand for. Our beautiful campus encourages exploration, developing new fields, and problem solving for the real world. It's a great place to launch your career. UW Stevens Point is home. Apply today at uwsp.edu. Welcome back, Pointers. The Central Wisconsin Youth Symphony Orchestra has just announced their special music program and competition winners for first place, second place, and honorable mention. In celebration of this event, the orchestra will perform a concert on Sunday, November 17th at 4 at Stevens Point Area High School. The Youth Symphony, under the direction of Kurt Van Team, is pre preparing to perform five pieces. The percussion ensemble under the, the direction of Brian Balda, ass assistant professor, professor of percussion at UW-Stevens Point is performing three songs. Tickets will be $3 for students or $10 for, family, uh, for a family of four or more. The CWYSOP is a nonprofit organization in partnership with UW-Stevens Point continuing education. The UWSP Music Department, the Aber Sutsky Center as well. A, a Hyde Music and mu Music Educators is Central 
Wisconsin. For more information on the concert and the programs at UWSP, visit the UWSP website and search Central Wisconsin Youth Symphony Orchestra. It's beginning to look a lot like award season, at least for the Public Choice Awards. The 2019 ePeople's Choice Awards will be this Sunday, November 10th at 7 p.m. Fans had about a month to vote for their favorite stars in categories such as Choice Movie of the Year, Movie Star, and TV Star. Some music categories were Choice Music Video and Album, cover, covering all from movies, TV, reality, competition shows, music, pop culture, podcast, and game changers. The ceremony provides a variety of media to recognize some of the beloved stars in Hollywood major awards have been announced, some of the major awards have already been announced. The singer Pink receiving the Champions Award, Jennifer Aniston receiving the Icon Award, and Gwen Stefani receiving the Fashion Icon Award. To, to find a list, go to the eonline.com and watch all these nominees live. The UWSP Theater and Dance Performance has pushed back the deadline 2020 fringe submission students are able to submit original pieces and performances to be brought to life in the, in the spring semester. Submissions are due to players president Colin Sullivan and co-art arts director Sophie McIntosh on November 24th at midnight. The submission duration should be no longer than 12 minutes and follow this year's theme, restart. There will be eight pieces selected. Students are also able to audition for the selected pieces. Auditions will be begin on Monday, December 9th, and callbacks will be on Tuesday, December 10th. For more information, contact the, the theater and dance department. That's all the entertainment stories we have for you this week. Coming up next is Claude Neve with Pointer Politics. I'm Thea Meyer with SPTV. To me, Studies is a program for people who love to tell stories, whether that be in written form, visual, or audio. Media Studies is exciting because it's always fresh, it's always new. Media is at the center of everything we do. More and more people ask to engage with media and use media. Our program really provides students with skills and techniques to be better prepared for that in the future. We offer courses in media production, both video and audio, nonfiction and fiction, music production, journalism, film studies. Media studies is a great way to get hands-on experience in the field that you're looking to do. They teach you the basic concept behind everything, and then they tell you to go do it. We really pride ourselves on thinking of a wide set of opportunities that we can give our students. The student organizations are a great asset. We have SPTV, the uh, student television organization, 90FM on the radio, and the pointer on our student-run newspaper. It's a great way for students to get involved, learn skills that they need for class, and meet new people. Some great facilities where our students can hone their skills. There's a giant studio in the center of the comm building. I've had quite a few classes in there. A lot of our classes are very hands-on. They're very interpersonal. You're getting the skills that will allow you to create your future, and I think that's what makes it a truly amazing experience for students. There's an incredible range of options for graduates. We've had students go out and become independent contractors, work for radio stations, newspapers, TV stations. Everyone is different and they have their own unique style. In all the classes and all the student organizations you get involved in, you have a lot of flexibility to really create your own work and do it in a way that means something to you. We're excited to see what students are making and what they want to make and how we can help students get from where they are to where they want to be. I'm in a video production class that's teaching me how to film documentaries. I'm also in a screenwriting class and I get to learn how to write movies. So I'm doing all these different cool things and I love it every day. Welcome back, Pointers. Taking a look at some state news, on Wednesday, November 6th, Wisconsin's Republican-controlled assembly attempted their first veto overrides, which targeted three budget vetoes by Governor Tony Evers. Yet on Thursday, November 7th, the first veto failed to the assembly, or to pass the assembly. The vetoes that are under scrutiny include reduced funding for a new crisis center and redirected money intended for doctors and behavioral health training. Republican Assembly Majority Jim Steinke urged support of the override attempt, saying that it was a chance to correct a mistake made by Evers. Democratic minority leader Gordon Heinz said that no Democrat, no Democrat will vote for the overrides, 
According to the AP News, veto overrides in Wisconsin are rare, with the last attempt being in 2010. The last successful override was in 1985. The last two overrides be voted on a later time. Moving on to national news, from more high-profile members of the Trump administration are being asked to testify as part of the ongoing impeachment inquiry. Among those are on the request list, Energy Secretary Rick Perry, Acting White House Chief on Staff Mick Mulvaney, the Undersecretary of State for Political Affairs David Hale, and John Lawrence reports. While President Trump trumpeted Republican political victories Tuesday night, Democrats were focused on the impeachment inquiry, saying the president abused his power with his call to Ukraine's president when he asked for dirt on 2020 presidential candidate Joe Biden and his son Hunter. The evidence is overwhelming and uncontradicted at this point. It's very clear exactly what the president was doing at that point. Republicans say this whole process is just political smoke and mirrors. I don't care what anybody else says about the phone call. The phone call I've made up my own mind is, is fine. However, Democrats are bolstered in their battle by an admission from U.S. Ambassador to the European Union, Gordon Sundland. He revised his testimony to say there was a definite link between U.S. funds to Ukraine and a probe into the Bidens. A quid pro quo most certainly did occur, and that he, Ambassador Sundland, was propounding it. And while former Vice President Biden's campaign issued a statement saying President Trump has violated his oath of office, Republicans are backing the president. If it were today, I, I don't think there's any question it would not lead to a removal. So the question is just how long does the Senate want it to uh, take? I'm John Lawrence reporting. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer's office, meanwhile, has set up an information hub for staffers. He is coordinating with 2020 Democratic presidential candidates who are in the Senate. If an impeachment trial happens, it could be during, uh, it could come during a time that they'd normally be on the campaign trail. Scranton, Pennsylvania has elected its first female mayor. Paige Canetti is a registered Democrat, but ran as an independent. She will now finish the term of a former mayor, Bill Courtright. He entered the plea deal on federal charges of bribery, conspiracy, and extortion was forced to resign back in July. Courtright's term would have ended January of 2021. Congetti is making history in another way. She's pregnant and will be the first mayor-elect to give birth. She hasn't been a Scranton resident for long. Congetti moved the line with her husband, who is from Scranton area. But Tungetti said that she thinks the fact that isn't from the area may have planned, may have played in her favor. I think being from Oregon, not being from here, is actually part of that. I think people are, are hungry for a fresh perspective. I think the fact that I'm, you know, my, my husband's family has been here for many, many generations, so that paired together is, is something that I believe is really powerful. Um, I think people are ready to move on from the corruption and, and you know, being a woman is, is, is one thing. It's really exciting to make history tonight, but I believe that my experience in the federal government, you know, working in finance, I think those things are really what pushed me over. I and Getty will be sworn in the beginning of January. That's all the political news we have for you this week. Now back to Brenton and Florence. I'm Claude Neve with SPTV Politics. Thanks, Claude. Well, that's all of the news we have for you tonight in SPTV. Until next time, Stevens Point, have a great night.